Barefoot Nation. This week, we are planting a tropical garden. This is literally gonna be cannas and bananas and palms, oh my. Let's go. All right, y'all. So you can see here that this is a very focal bed. Basically, it is highly visible from everywhere in the garden. There's a couple things that I'm trying to do here. First of all, this is a perennial ginger, uh, Zingiber Mioga white feather, and it likes to have a little bit of shade. And um, as you can see, it gets full blazing sun all day. If you couldn't tell a second ago, I was panning the iPad uh, across the sky, and uh, that's, yeah, so it gets full sun. Um, so I want to, it's not usually as much of a problem until later in summer. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to basically be planting some plants that are behind it that are going to, facing south, that are going to cast shade this way throughout the day. What I'm thinking those will be will be canna lilies. I have several canna lilies from last year and, uh, and a couple new ones that, uh, that I think would be great in this corner and a really nice kind of tropical mass planting. Yes, I do try to go to local places, but occasionally I'll go out to Home Depot and something will catch my eye. Also too, check out how much the hardy bananas have grown. That's, don't wanna, I don't wanna turn it into a garden tour, but yeah. So I probably should be pulling these weeds, but uh, like all this turf grass that's coming up, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to be planting the annuals so that they hopefully will choke out the weeds. Um, and that's, again, probably something I'll regret later on in summer. But, uh, you know, anyway, for now, enough yapping. Let me, uh, let me show you more of the plants. So this tray here, you can see I have a row of three blacky potato vines, three marguerite, and I have two supertunia jazzberries. Um, a Bordeaux, and then some latte, Supertunia latte. So I guess this isn't a Vista, so I, it might not be as vigorous. Um, I don't know. I don't really know. Anyway, that's the first flat. In the second flat, I have some Supertunia persimmon. I have a different... Um, a new annual. This is a Waikiki Sunset um, Lysimachia, or a type of loosestrife. But what's cool about it is it's hardy to zone 7A. So I'm in zone 6A, but in a good, decent, sunny microclimate, you might be able to push it a little bit. But it's a beautiful plant that has nice variegation. And with all these pinks, purples, and reds, I'm hoping that it's gonna kind of offset some of those. So I have three of those. I have another, uh, the third jazzberry right there. And then I have three lantanas right here. Um, apparently I forgot about, so I have two Supertunia Bordeaux. These, although it's not a Vista, I have grown them, are somewhat vigorous. So I think what I'll do is uh, take the Bordeaux and the Lattes. These plant companies make me say such ridiculous names. So I'll take the Bordeaux and the Lattes and put them uh, somewhere separate because they both will grow at a similar pace. So I already have right here an Alocasia Borneo Giant planted. So right where this tray is setting is where I'm gonna be laying out some of the um, Supertunias that are not Vistas and the theoretically less vigorous. And actually too, the Persimmon is in that category where it doesn't say Vista on the tag, so maybe they should go with the other one and the jazzberry should be just on its own. Not sure yet. All right, y'all, so these super aggressive growing annuals I'm gonna be planting in this area, um, hopefully to compete with the bindweed a little bit. I, side note, I actually think this, clo um, this volunteer cluster of clover is really beautiful. I really hope that this perennial orchid blooms relatively quickly so that, uh, which it does have a little bud, so that the purple and the white are blooming together. I know clover to some is a weed, but it's fantastic for fixing nitrogen into your soil. And, um, and yeah, they can be really pretty in the right spot. Only here at the Barefooted Gardener are you going to 
hear about how clover and its beneficial assets. Just kidding, there's actually a lot of people who also think that, but it's true, check it out. So these jazzberries, I'm thinking are gonna go kind of near the agapanthus right here. The agapanthus will bloom blue in late summer. Then again, maybe I'll do annuals over here. Might be nice to have some super tunias, a little pop of color, even though it's not very Japanese to have flowers, tropical colors near a lantern. All right, so I got to planting. I'll show you, jumped the gun a little bit, but I'll show you the layout. So the other thing with annual planting is I just planted this with my hands and no shovel. Now, granted, I will be using a trenching shovel, um, but it's important with annuals that you have a lot of really good stuff, organic matter in your soil, and it's kind of friable. This was heavy clay, so it's not like, um, and it had rocks too, apparently. <laughs> so it's not like you can't take poor soil and make it good really quickly. Um, but just make sure that you're putting the good stuff like composted manure and uh, maybe lobster compost or something along those lines. But just put good stuff in the soil. This windmill palm, by the way, um, is probably muerte. However, uh, I just threw it in the ground and it's going near annual. So if it comes back, great. Otherwise, it's uh, compost or mulch. All right, y'all. So basically what's going on here is I've got the plants between space. Basically, I mean, this these are like about two feet apart, but they're kind of between two and four feet um, apart spacing wise, just kind of wherever there's a little pocket that I want to have a little color or fill in. Um, in the soil, a little, little bit of contrast. So the blacky potato vine is going to contrast the Bengal tiger. Actually, that's a Tropicana gold. It's going to contrast the cannas really nicely. So this whole area, when everything's in flower, uh, or as things come and go into flower, the annuals will be kind of constant color as they are. The other thing I'm going to do that I actually saw back on YouTube a long time ago is have blacky potato vine underneath bananas. And uh, that's once that forms a carpet, that's gonna look absolutely incredible. And then in case the pansies, which kind of have just barely started growing into their own, in case these die out in heat, the potato vine will just eat them. But of course, how could I forget? I have three beautiful colocasias or elephant ears here. They're soaking in my pondless waterfall because it's always good to have your plants well watered before you plant them. Um, so here I have a, a heart of the jungle colocasia. I have here a Maui sunrise. And then one of my favorite plants that I'm glad Proven Winners is growing is colocasia sangria. So you know that it's uh, available from tissue culture and free of virus, unlike some of the original um, people who carry this plant, Brian's Botanicals, that uh, they're infected with mosaic virus normally. So this is a clean plant, no virus, which is awesome. And yeah, and then also too, here I have three, you like, you notice I do things in odd numbers. I have three of these Kelly Ray sweet potato vines. Um, this is another aggressive one. So. Um, these are going to go just in various places, kind of where the green and the black ones are mixed, and probably particularly underneath the bananas. Alright guys, so here's the basic layout. I already uh, <laughs> got ahead of myself and did the thing where I start planting before I turn the camera on, but um, I'm going to do these lysimachias in the very front, and then right behind the clump of ginger right here, I'm going to plant three of these lantanas, which are going to grow bigger into another kind of clump, hopefully. Right here, I have two, amongst all the weeds, I have two um, Cleomes. I think the cultivar is Senorita Rosalita. It's a proven winner's plant, but don't quote me on that because I don't remember. Um, and then right here behind these other containers with more annuals, I have the heart of the jungle taro, which is going to grow big. So essentially, this container is going to look, or yeah, so it'll do its thing. So there's that. And I'm basically undecided this random clearance alocasia if I want to have two elephant ears 
to alocasia planted in really close proximity. Probably not going to do that just because I don't know if they would compete with each other too much. But um, anyway, let's get to planting. So I quickly wanted to discuss soil, and I know I kind of have touched on it briefly, but guys, this was heavy clay when I moved in uh, one full year ago. And already you can see that the worms have made quick work of these beech leaves, in this case, that I got from my fall cleanups. Um, so I got to mulch someone else's leaves in my garden for free. I actually got paid to do that because, you know, that's what we do apparently is get rid of leaves so that and lots and lots of other different types of organic matter have been added and you can see that it's moist it's currently like 90 degrees but the soil is still moist and just absolutely lovely and that nice soil is going to make all the difference in the world to this kelly ray sweet potato vine and so many other plants just like the musa bastia all right y'all so as you can see everything basically is planted so now, right as I was about to start digging the hole for the Tropicana Black, um, I just moved it to the side and thought, let me step back, because I do have, right, uh, right beside that Ligularia, it's probably hard to see, but I do have a Black Magic elephant ear, and that's kind of to draw your eye back against all the green plants. So I kind of wanted to make sure that that was visible, and that was kind of the intention with the Tropicana Black, so that guy might be growing somewhere else in the garden. I also pulled out some of the uh, turf grass that just is super persistent here. It's probably Kentucky blue or something like that, so it's not like really persistent grass. I'm just lazy about actually starting. So only like about 20 minutes of work. I can't wait to see what this is going to grow into later this summer. Um, the robins are already searching through all the living soil and looking for worms and other little bugs to eat. So that's always fun. So again, the Lysimachia right here are in the front. The Alocasia Borneo Giant is right there, and that's going to kind of shade this and the um, Strelitzia planter, which I did in another video, are going to shade the ginger um, during the hottest part of the day. And then the cannas and the bananas and all these plants, it's going to look super tropical. And if I just get all these freaking, all this freaking grass pulled up, uh, before all that seed drops, that's going to be really awesome. This, by the way, is a plantain, which is technically a weed, but I think if you pull a leaf off, it has a sap in it that's um, like soothing to the skin, to sores. So it's kind of medicinal. All right, y'all can see the empty 12-pack. Uh, so uh, just going to have to tune into the garden tours to see it all grown in. So you'll notice that I basically have these two colocasia and these uh, and the supertunias left. And so basically um, the reason that these supertunias didn't go in the ground is that they need to have really good soil. And while that is definitely a work in progress, it's not there yet. It's not good enough to uh, be planting petunias in the ground. As far as the colocasia go, I'm probably going to use them in the container, but I just don't really know yet. All right, so I ended up using the Maui Sunrise in a container, a different one, and then and then I also ended up using the Sangria in a different container. And uh, I'm good, I have a red leaf basil there, and then also, too, some, possibly some supertunias, maybe more herbs. Still don't know, but, but really I wanted to focus on this part of the garden here. You can also see that I got some uh, fruiting bananas from Green Dreams down in Florida. Um, you can see that UPS beat it up pretty good, but uh, it's a banana, so it'll recover pretty quickly. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, let me know what's growing on in your gardens and or how do you greet people or yourself uh, when you come into your garden? Uh, I'm curious, so leave that down below. Love to hear from you guys. Uh, if you want to Drop me a big ol' one of these. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. And if you need more barefoot goodness in your life, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button and tap that bell. 
thanks for watching, y'all. See you on the next one.